So Oliver, just just start. Give me, give me where you think how, how you're performing so far, and maybe more important, how is the unit as a whole performing? Um, I think overall as a unit, um, we've done a great job to start the year. Uh, we've had, I think, a great start compared to you know what some people may have thought. Uh, you know, obviously losing Bryce Ford, Wheaton, and Sam James off a punt team is um, it's pretty devastating. Um, obviously, two NFL talent type of guys. So I mean. The guys that have uh, been on the punt team so far this year, they've been spectacular, um, covering kicks. And you know, I think our net right now is where it needs to be. We can obviously improve. Um, for me personally, I think that I can do a better job of helping those guys. Um, I think I've been adequate, but I think there's a lot of room for improvement. Um, I mean, obviously, last game against TCU, having a 46-yard average looked good on paper, but there's a couple of times where I you know, didn't hit the ball how I wanted to and it's something I can improve on going forward. But I think there's a lot of room for improvement, but we've started well. How do you judge yourself, especially this year now that you have more seasoning, as you're just talking about if you can't fully look at stats, because some people maybe that's all they do when you're looking at a punter. Mm -hmm. You've got a great average, kicking it far. How do you judge yourself, though? I mean, personally for myself, there's you know a, th a few things go into that. I mean, there is a having an average is definitely a massive part of it, you know. That's what is, you know, taken on the field and what that's what flip the, flips the field. So, I mean, 46 yards will do, but I mean, in terms of just getting the ball where it needs to be consistently so the guys can cover the kicks easier um, is something that's a huge part of my job. So, um, I think against TCU, it was my second punt where I kind of pulled it across towards the middle and that stresses the coverage. Um, I need to do a better job of that, of making sure it's, you know, where it needs to be. But, um, yeah, just just making sure the ball is where it needs to be, um, with a good amount of you know hang time, so that the the coverage unit can get down and cover the kick is um, how I grade myself. You mentioned losing Grayson Sam. Who are some of the guys that have kind of stepped up into those roles? I think Andrew Wilson Lamp's done a really good job at gunner. Um, we've you know the whole the the guards and tackles that we've got, Caden Barza, uh, he's done a great job. Um, you know. Obviously, having um, we have a rotation at Gunner, so you know EJ Horton stepped up. He's a incredibly quick guy with speed that can you know get down the field. Um, I mean the whole the whole punt coverage unit has done a really good job, and as of you know so far this year, the shield has been amazing as usual. Um, Jalen and Nick, so I think they're they're doing a really good job at their role as well. So I think a lot of the guys have have really stepped up and just done what they've needed to do. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Please. What was it like for you to get dinged up a couple of weeks ago? I mean, I think you talked about over the summer you haven't really been hit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all yeah, no, it was um, it was tough. Um, you know, a game against you know a team where we really didn't want to punt against, but you know it was it was something that I had to deal with. You know, going going forward, honestly, my thoughts when it happened weren't really focused on the the game itself it was already focusing on next week at Pitt because um, obviously I wanted to be healthy for that and there was a lot of um, a lot of mental stress that I put on myself to get back for that game because you know as you think about it you know as a college athlete having four years you have two games here and two games there and I didn't want to miss one of those opportunities to play here against them so it was something that I put myself through a lot of rehab and treatment and had to get back for, but yeah, it was um, something I'm still dealing with and I probably will have to deal with for the rest of the year, but um, I'm feeling pretty good right now. That's probably the one thing, you know, your lower leg, that's probably like the one area as a punter you can't afford to push it at all, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it, was, it was an unfortunate play. Um, I think, you know, Keyshawn got unlucky in the way that he kind of snagged his guy right into me, but um, it happens and, you know, it's football, you got to deal with it, so um, just keep working at it and Hope that it feels better. So yeah. You did have a pump block earlier mm -hmm. this year. Learning foam moment for you for your shield. What would you guys learn out of that? Um, I think I think it was just a, a good job of the pit the pit uh, punt rush team. They did a they did a good job of reading what we were going to do. Um, they got off the ball quickly and you know they they rushed the shield and they had that guy that jumped over. Um, so I mean, it, I don't think it's something that we need to be concerned about. It wasn't, it wasn't a factor at all last year, and it hasn't been a factor um, at any point this year except for that play. So he did a good job. I think, I think that he timed it perfectly, and nine out of ten times we have that covered. But that was the one time that 
you know, he, he timed it perfectly and credit to him for doing so. you ever dealt with any sort of injury before the decaying game? I've had, yeah. Magnitude? I've had injuries before. Um, not really on my kicking leg or foot sp uh, specifically. But, um, yeah, it's, it's something that throughout college I haven't really had to deal with too much and I've been able to push through things that um, otherwise would have kept me sidelined. So, yeah, it's the first injury that, you know, I really had to, you know, sit back and realise that I may or may not be able to play um, against, you know, the next opponent. And that really, uh, that was something that motivated me to put a lot of time into getting my body right because sitting on the sidelines just wasn't really something I wanted to even think about. So, um, yeah, it's it was unfortunate, but I'm glad I got back. Do you think the physicality of the TCU game approached Australian, Australian rules football? <laughs> Um, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Like in terms of in terms of the, the toughness and that? Yeah, I think yeah. TCU was a gritty win for us. Um, you know, up front, O line, D line wise, we I think we really that's where we really succeeded. And you know, sitting and seeing those guys just putting in a lot of work all day long. Um, it was a it's a testament to them and their work ethic and their physicality. And so um, yeah, I think we did a really good job being physical up front. And yeah, it was good good tough football. Like that, though. Yeah, yeah, a lot of toughness, a lot of uh, Australian rules football about it for sure. Any eye poking in Australian rules football? I don't know about that one, honestly. I think that was, um, <laughs> I think that's a bit unusual, but you know, we'll, we'll uh, let White get back from that one. Yeah. yeah. How's a how's a Austin Rick been, been? Yeah, he's been phenomenal um, all year long. I mean, he's someone that a lot of guys don't really take note of, um, but as I've said before, and as Coach Brown has said before, he's just a he's a phenomenal talent, and he's done a great job all year long. Um, and it's a good thing that people don't notice him because it means he's doing his job. So he he keeps he keeps me right, and if I ever need to keep him right, I'm hoping to be in that position. But um, yeah, he's he's unreal. Is it helpful to you then to to tell him good job and <laughs> let him know yeah. he's you know at least you're seeing him? Yeah, this, the guys in the special teams room. Um, especially know how good he is and like we all we all let him know how how good of a job he's doing um but coach Coons, coach brown they all they take they take note of it and um yeah he doesn't go unnoticed for sure Oliver, um, i understand that you probably have like traditional calls on fake punts but just just watching when you roll out sometimes it seems like it enters your head for a second like mm -hmm. wow there's a lot of room here i could probably run and run and run yeah no built in do you ever have an urge to like eh? Um, yeah, there's been a couple of times um, where I've, you know, seen seen holes or seen the defense um, not ready. Um, I think it was last year against Kansas State or someone we were backed up in the end zone. I took about 20 steps before I kicked the ball, and this year against TCU, obviously, um, I pushed the shield a little bit too far, probably. But um, you know, there's definitely times where you know there's gaps that open up. Um, so I mean, if I see a hole and coach. Coach will allow me to. I might run, but um, yeah, for sure. I mean, if I see something, I might go for it. Yeah. Is that part of the value of kind of diversifying how many ways you can kick it? Is that mm -hmm. they're not expecting a rollout every time, and maybe they're not schemed to be on the right side? And yeah, definitely. So it. yeah, if, if teams overload one side or the other, um, and one side's open, I could just you know take it take it and run that way. But um, you know, I think it depends on the situation a lot as well. Um, so if we're backed up a lot, it's probably not going to be beneficial for us to, you know, get a first down and you know potentially just be in a similar situation. But um, if the opportunity presents itself in the right way in a situation, then yeah, I'll take it for sure. You're not going to give me the answer, but is it called on the sideline, or is that understood that if, like, on a Tuesday, do you guys mm -hmm. sit down and say, hey, if it looks like this, then go for it automatically, or does that have to be called on the sideline? Um, I think. We're working something in now where it's more up to me to make a read uh, based off of what's coming. So the TCU game was a good example. Like there was a time where I probably could have taken it, but you know you have your typical fakes that are called off the sideline. But I think we're getting to the point where, as you said, there's been times where I've looked and seen it, but I've punted it anyway, where I potentially could have taken it. So I think we're going to try and implement a situation where I can do that and just myself where it may not be called from the sideline, just take it and go. clear to you that if you do run, make it? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a given. If I uh, if I take it, I do have to make it for sure. What kind of athlete are you? What kind of athlete am I? Um, 
I've definitely developed as an athlete since being here. I'm not, obviously, you know, I'm not a linebacker. I'm not a wide receiver. I'm not, you know, one of those guys. But um, I consider myself able to do certain things, and that's a that's something that I have to know within myself to stay within my ability. Um, I'm not going to do anything crazy, you know, but, yeah, I'm going to try and do my best. Could I fake a pass? Um, yeah, I think I could. Um, my throwing was atrocious when I first got here. But, um, you know, I've, I've thrown the ball enough now, and... Um, I think I could make a pass if need be, but yeah. Is that something you practice at all? Or? I mean, you know, just throwing the ball back and forth, warming up, um, just getting the uh, the other American guys to teach me how to actually throw a football has been helpful. But, um, it could be different than if it occurs in the game, though. Oh, yeah, for sure. No, it could be different, but um, I feel like I have enough confidence now to be able to grab the ball and spin it and you know hit a target, for sure. Specialists feel isolated at times. You guys, I mean, you have a period or two where you work with the whole team, but otherwise you guys are off mm -hmm. on the side quite a bit. So is it a problem? No, I don't want to call it a problem, but mm -hmm. is it something you guys got to have to actually get in there and become part of the team and not just your own little clique? Yeah, I mean, I think we make a good emphasis on um, integrating specialists as well as we can. Uh, like throughout the weight room, like we, we do all the uh, the running and the exercises that the whole team does. So I think we kind of gain respect through that um, and building that trust that although we may just be specialists, we're, we, we're doing everything that the whole team is doing. So we're putting in the same amount of work in the off season. You know, we're doing everything that everyone else is doing. So we're no different to any other guy on the team, but we just have a different role. Um, but, you know, we hang out with guys in the locker room and I think that helps for sure as well, building building that relationship and that trust with other guys. Cody asked you about being an athlete. You, you play basketball. Do, do you still pick up a basketball at all? Do you go out and play? Um, I, have, I honestly haven't picked up a basketball in about a year now. So I do um, enjoy shooting every now and again. Uh, when we go down to Coach Brown's house, have a you know bit of team building and shooting around. But um, apart from that, not really. Don't have the, don't have the time and it's, uh, it's past now. So, yeah. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you.